Dragon Knights, this is Dragon Dragon. Welcome to another Dragon Knight video. Uh, I'm uh, here with Nadoodle. Hi. Uh, Kuro couldn't make it today. She's got, uh, she uh, kind of got busy, so it's just the two of us. Um, before we, we begin this video, uh, I got a couple of announcements. First off, uh, the live stream uh, schedule on uh, on Twitch has is going to be changing. Actually, about three or four days after you uh, see this, actually, uh, starting uh, starting in June, uh, uh, all the live stream or the weekend live streams are going to be on Saturday instead of Sunday. Uh, the times are going to be the same, and Tuesdays and Thursdays are still going to be the same. Just the weekend live streams. Uh, second, there's going to be two parts to a charity live stream on Canada Day f on July 1st. Uh, the first part is you know, is going to be well, I'll get to, the second part of it is going to be uh, Jackbox Games. The f first part of it is going to be the very first live uh, episode of of this series, which it, which explains why uh, you'll see that there's a note here. Uh, on the screen that says uh, that uh, this is the last video, but not the last episode. I think that was all, all the announcements we uh, had for this episode. I think that's all we've got. I don't have anything. Well, do you want to begin or do you want me to? Uh, you go ahead and begin. Your show, after all. <laughs> well, our show, actually. Which actually uh, uh, is actually brings up the uh, the first question uh, for this video actually for the viewers. Uh, since this is uh, possibly going to be a live stream series soon, uh, uh, not necessarily on Thursday, but depends on uh, how everyone uh, or when everyone is available. What do you uh, guys uh, think should be the uh, the live stream version series title. Yeah, uh, we need a title. We're really bad at coming up with names. Because I won't be able to uh, do a live stream every uh, Thursday, because I do have a life of my own after all. And I'm sure uh, Duel does as well. <laughs> Both of us do. Both of us do. <laughs> of course. Uh. Now, with that uh, out of the way, uh, the the topic, as you probably saw in the uh, title, uh, is what is uh, our favorite uh, uh, RPG for those who are uh, a little newer to in, to gaming uh, in general. Uh, RPG is a role-play game. Uh, well, and more importantly, we weren't very specific about putting up the subject for this one like it was just put up as digital video games and yeah it took about an hour an hour and a half roughly just to decide what topic specifically so it lessened for us be more specific because otherwise then we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what exactly we really want to talk about we, um, we did have the idea of making it a multi-part uh ser or and topic so well, we might do that, but uh, right, right now, now it's role-playing role game. <laughs> and the uh, the role-playing game I've uh, chosen was EQOA, which is EverQuest Online Adventures for the PS2. Uh, I think it might have been the 360 as well, I'm not sure. Uh, that was actually the, probably the very first uh, RPG I've ever actually played, uh, to be honest. And, and it, but it was actually uh, one that uh, within uh, within maybe an hour, I got kind of addicted to it. It, uh, it allowed uh, uh, free roam games, or not free roam games, but it allowed free roaming, and uh, it allowed you to uh, uh, interact with other people as well. The only downside is uh, the creator of the game had actually taken down the uh, the server, uh, thus uh, 
say it nicely, ticking off uh, millions of people because of it. So uh, some people have actually spent uh, hundreds if not thousands of dollars uh, on the in game for the uh, additions and whatnot, just for them to uh, shut down the servers without, uh, or no, with only about a week worth of notice. That's it. But uh, but the reason that uh, EQOA is my favorite is because one, you get to decide uh, on the class, like or class and well, the uh, general setup technically. Uh, I believe it was like class, or no, it was the race and then the class, and whatever combo you chose, that was your character from the very start. After that, it didn't matter how you played or what items you picked up, your character will eventually get better, and sometimes some some of the magic user would get physical uh, uh physical items, some of the physical users will get magical items, and vice versa. It just uh, it just became more of a do-as-you-wish do type of game, which I actually kind of like. Of course, with uh, with the optional uh, storyline or quest line uh, added to it, just like a, an actual RPG. So yeah, I kind of enjoyed the uh, the free roam, the interaction with uh, with others, the uh, the help that uh, other gamers on the game uh, actually gave, and as well as the uh, the uh, freedom to build your class how you want to um, to play the game, rather than uh, how the game wants you to play it. So that's pretty much. Uh, why I uh, enjoy uh, EQ EQOA. Okay. So, that's so talking about, about an MMO. MMO. Uh, I gotta tell you, my first MMO was World of Warcraft. No, no, I take it back. My first MMO was a thing called Neverwinter Nights on AOL, which was the by far one of the first if not the first MMO. Not my favorite, but uh, we'll get into my favorite here. Um, I'm going to have to say my favorite RPG, computer RPG, is a game called Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, the first Original Sin was... A, I mean, both of these are made by a little startup called Laren Studios. Um... And they're, they're games that most people... So Laren Studios is the little company that, that crowdfunds most of their games. Not all of them. They're, they're mostly known for the Divinity series, or Divine Divinity series, depending on who you talk to, uh, just how they refer to it. Uh, Original Sin 2 is a sequel. It's set a thousand years after the first one. Uh, the first one is a two-player game. It's specifically built to be a two-player, story-driven, non-MMO game. Uh, and the sequel is specifically built to be a four-player, non-MMO game, where basically each person... I think Discord um, screwed up there. <laughs> Possibly. Now you're <laughs> saying. Uh, I was gonna say the game is specifically built. Uh, the first one is built around two players, and not being an MMO. It's got a storyline, and it's specifically built for two people to play in a co-op manner, uh, as an RPG, not as an action game, as a turn-based combat RPG. Uh, and the the sequel is designed for four people. Uh, it follows, you know, basically grand legendary journeys, epic heroic kind of stuff. You could have uh, companions. You could have, but there are no classes in the game. 
you you start off with kind of an idea of what you want to do. Like here I am. I want to be you know I want to be a spellcaster uh, with a focus on say electrical and or or yeah electrical and say fire. Well, you put a couple of points in those skills, you choose your spells, your starting spells, and over the course of the game, you might decide that, oh, I also want to be a healer. And so you can put points towards being a healer and learn healing spells. And so there's no classes per se. It's really where you want to put your points at a given time. Um, I like the game. You could easily pour 70 to 80 hours into the first one. Uh, I still haven't beaten the second one, and the second one's been out for about a year. Um, we played, uh, I think we put in, our first playthrough was 80, I want to say 89 hours or something like that. Uh, for a non-MMO game, that's ex pretty extreme uh, to have that many hours of gameplay and none of it felt like grinding like a, a lot of games a lot of rpgs especially mmos put um artificially increase the length of their their play experience by making grinding like grinding for materials grinding for gear grinding for like they make those things an important part of the game so that you have to spend more time doing those things so you play the game longer whereas it, does, it never felt that way in either of the Divinity, the Divinity games, not Divinity. There's no F there. Um, so, anyway, that would probably be my favorite game. It's got some nice features to it. Um, one of the things that it's known for is how different spells interact with each other so for example you have a grease spell that causes uh, enemies to slip and fall you could cast a grease spell and then the very next turn or on the same turn someone could throw like a fire arrow or something on the grease spell and cause it to ignite um, so spells and spell effects interact with each other and create uh, additional effects that uh, tend to do more damage or have a different end goal or end effect than you might otherwise get. And that's one of the interesting mechanics about the game. Um, and it's just really good writing and a really good storyline as well. Uh, with a lot of callbacks to the other stories in the Divinity series and in that universe. As well as callbacks to the original game. Um, uh, original, the original original Sin game. So on the whole, it's probably my favorite RPG, almost certainly, um, from an independent studio that doesn't have a big publisher, uh, which brings up an interesting observation that most of the really good games that I have, um, like most of the games, modern games that you see, uh, they have... Um, a publisher that's attached to them, like Mass Effect. They're owned by EA. This is an independent studio that doesn't have a publisher. Like, their stuff is pretty much distributed by them on Steam, and they've been very successful, and they've actually put out far superior games to folks that, like EA or Activision or Ubisoft. Um, because they focus on the gameplay experience, and that's super, super important to me. So, I think that's all I got. That's like my favorite RPG. Probably of all time. And before people uh, start uh, commenting, uh, uh, yes, I know uh, MMOs are, are not in the same uh, realm, but at the same time they are because they do still... Uh, or they are still classified as role-play games. Well, you are taking upon a role in a fictional world. Only difference playing, is it's online. Playing a character that is unique to yourself. Uh, well, I mean, Divinity is online. Like, Divinity Original Sin is online. It's just not an MMO. Um, 
as in to say it doesn't it's not an open world there's not like thousands of people playing together it's four people uh and, and you know you want to talk about rpgs let's talk about the, something like elite dangerous elite dangerous sure it's a space combat sim uh you're flying a starship but ultimately it's an rpg too because you are a pilot flying a starship trying to make your way in a universe right like one of the things that I like about MMOs, especially MMOs, is that with a few exceptions, um, like work, World of Warcraft is a great example of this. Uh, they don't have like World of Warcraft has a story, and it's the story is your character's adventure, but your story is like everyone else's story. The nice thing about games like Elite is that there is no like your story is kind of what you make of it. Like you're you're dropped into a starship and put into the universe and told go. And you're not given any guidance. Yes, there are storylines to follow. There are things to do. But they turn out differently based on who's playing them and how they play them. So there's no like the story is the story you create and in that way it's an art more freeform RPG than say something like uh, EverQuest or um, Divinity. Divinity has a definite storyline. Yeah, the outcomes are maybe different depending on what decisions you make, but it's still a storyline. It's still set scripted storyline. Whereas um, the tendency now, as time has gone on for RPGs, is to make things that are a little more open ended, which I applaud. Um, I could, I, I, yeah, that's a game design thing. We could talk about game design for an hour. I don't really want to do that though. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I could probably, you know, think of lots of uh, games to uh, talk about just from uh, uh, storylines alone. <laughs> yeah. But overall, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 is probably my favorite uh, favorite RPG, at least within the last 15 years. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's the way I would go with that, as far as favorite RPGs go. Uh, runners Up, I have a couple of Runners Up. Uh, Wasteland 2. I, which was released in 2013. I have uh, one uh, runner-up in mind as well. Uh, it's kind of a part of a franchise, but it's it's only semi uh, free roam, not entirely free roam. Uh, I believe it was Pokemon Coliseum for PS2. I believe it was. Uh, yeah. You, you're kind of playing the, uh, you're kind of playing like uh, someone from from the, uh, the, uh, villain team that basically wants to go, wants to prevent uh, the others uh, from causing more mayhem. Thus, um, thus, becoming your own character then instead of part of a group. Mm -hmm. And the. Uh, the story just keeps going on from there. Well, um, like I said, I'm runner-ups. Wasteland 2. There's a Wasteland 3 coming out, which I'm really excited for. Uh, for MMOs, uh, weirdly enough, um, I've played most of the ones that are done by uh, this, the group of people that do... Um, the current Neverwinter Nights, and they do DC Heroes, and they do... Actually, it's Champions now, it's not DC Heroes. And they do... Um, what's the other one they do? That whole bunch of... Star Trek Online is another one they do. Um, I've played all of those. I think of those, my favorite's probably a, a Star Trek Online. Uh, but as far as pure RPGs go... And of course, you can't not mention the, the seminal classics, the Gold Box games from SSI from the 80s, which gave us the modern format of most single-player RPGs. And, uh, and or, of course, you can't, you can't forget the, uh, 
the classic uh, DDO or Dungeons and Dragons Online. Yeah, DDO, which later became Neverwinter. Like it's it's run by the same company now. Um, or Baldur's Gate, without which we would not have DDO. Like no joke, the original Baldur's Gate and that whole trilogy of games. Um, but we wouldn't have Baldur's Gate if we didn't have uh, the Gold Box D and D Pool of Radiance or the Dragonlance series that they did, um, or the later games in that series, not all of which were gold box. Um, I have to make one correction about what I said earlier. I just looked it up. Uh, it's actually uh, Pokemon Coliseum was on the GameCube, not PS2. I was wrong. That is that is correct. And that is why we never had it at my home, because we did not have a GameCube. We had a, we had a N64. But that's what I got. Those are my runner-ups. That's my favorite game. I don't really have much more to add. I can't really think of anything either. I don't really play m many RPGs, to be honest. That's pretty much most of what we used to play up until the last two years. Last year, actually. We've been playing Warframe. Lots of Warframe lately. Actually, I just realized I haven't really played RPGs, you know, war games, battle games, or history games. Or any PvP games in general, really. I don't do PvP. I mean, there's PvE games like, uh, uh, like the PS2 game from Sega, which was uh, Nightshade. But uh, at the same time, that does have a little bit of a story added to it, but you're not really uh, versing anyone specific. You're versing what's in the storyline. But uh, I think uh, I think we'll uh, come to that if we ever uh, uh, bring up the, uh, the fighter uh, type of games. Yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of anything for uh, RPGs, though. <laughs> well, I mean, RPGs, we pretty much covered it. <laughs> pretty much. I don't think I have... I don't think I have anything else to uh, add to it, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was supposed to be our favorite RPGs. I've talked about them. I'm, I'm done. I, I guess this will be a, a shorter episode then. <laughs> That's all. So there you guys have it. Short episode in preparation for our live feed episode. Uh, please let us know in the comments below and respond to any surveys that we post. Uh, let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about live. And we'll see you guys live on uh, the early part of June, probably around June 1st. Um, it's going to depend on, of course, people's work schedules. The current plan is to start this thing on June 1st, though. So, there you go. I w was originally thinking of uh, doing a topic like uh, Defy Media, but that's already been done so many times. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, it's up to you guys in the comments section. What, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, my my question for you guys is what what do you want the live stream uh, version of this to be called? Because we can't call it Thabo Thursday since it won't be always on Thursday anymore. Do you have any questions for the viewers, Doodle? I have no questions at all. I'm pretty much along for the ride, guys. You tell me what you want to hear out of me. I'm happy to tell you, to give you my views on it. Oh, there you go. <laughs>
Well, I guess the uh, second question could be, uh, what is your uh, uh, most or least uh, favorite uh, role-play games? Let us know uh, your opinions uh, down in the comment section below. I think that's pretty much it. That's all that I got. So, uh, as usual, for you guys who are new here, the... Uh, the live streams are on twitch.tv slash uh, and it's every Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, by the time you're seeing this, every uh, Saturday. Uh, th as it uh, says uh, down underneath the webcam, uh, this is the last uh, video, but it's not the last episode. The live stream episode will be... Actually, the first one we, we were thinking of... Uh, adding it to the you know, charity live stream on July 1st for Canada Day. Um, but uh, uh, you can check out my uh, Twitter at Dragos Dragon, which is pretty much my uh, my handle for most social medias. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much it. So. Uh, as usual, uh, if you like this uh, video, fire up the like button, fire up the subscribe button if you haven't already and you want to see more. And I guess we will see you later. See ya. Peace out.